Welcome to Corkin today for February 27th, 2023. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now and give you my opinion on them. Now, this is my opinion. If you wanna learn more about these stories and come up with your own opinion, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment, I'll put a link to each one there so you can read them for yourself and let me know what you think down in the comments. Hey, if you're new here though, before we get into the news of the day, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, it really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So YouTube recommends our videos to more people, helping us grow, helping us support our families here. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. All right, let's start off today with a big bombshell that broke late on Friday. AT&T Sportsnets, which are now owned by Warner Brothers Discovery. They were sold to Discovery as part of that Warner Brothers Discovery merger. Um, will be shutting down soon. So Warner Brothers Discovery is telling uh, teams that they have until the end of March to buy back the rights, or um, they will declare bankruptcy in Chapter Seven with the intent to shut down and liquidate the RSNs. Now they did tell teams that hey, you are welcome to take our equipment and use that to continue to produce content. MLB, NHL, and NBA have all said they have backup plans to stream in market games. So I do expect, and they have hinted that they will try to resell the rights of these games to other networks. Who knows, maybe ESPN Plus, maybe Amazon, maybe they'll just go to a different channel, uh, maybe a cable channel, we'll see. But this is a pretty major news. We already know that Bally Sports is having bankruptcy trouble. We suspect later this or later on in March, if they're unable to um, rearrange their debt to strike new deals with their debt companies, that they'll be declaring bankruptcy also. Uh, so we'll have to keep a very close eye on this. Now, Bally Sports is not intending to shut down. They're trying to do chapter seven, or excuse me, chapter 11. Seven's the shutdown, 11 is the restructuring for Bally Sports. AT&T Sports is trying to do chapter seven. They want out, they're done. They're not gonna be an RSN anymore. By the end of 2023, we may have a major change in how we watch sports. Keep a close eye on this. This is happening very rapidly. The RSN market, or model we'll call it, is collapsing much faster than anybody ever suspected it would. So keep a very close eye on this. Not that long ago, RSN seemed like sure money, easy way to generate cash and revenue. Now they seem like a weight around the neck of the owners who are looking to get rid of these things because people aren't watching, people aren't paying for it like they thought they would. We'll keep a close eye. So leave me a comment. I'm, I'm a sports fan. I don't have my regional sports network. And honestly, there's so many other sports on TV. I've just kind of gradually moved away from baseball and NBA. I have never was much of a hockey fan. I always call it a little bit. But for me, I just kind of started watching other stuff. Are you similar? Are you a sports fan that moved away from RSNs when they were dropped from most services? Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, if you are an Air T, uh, TV customer, Sling TV customer, or a Dish customer, or also Boost or Wireless, you may have noticed that some of the customer service options and many of those websites are down or partially uh, not functioning correctly. There's a lot of speculation here because Dish hasn't commented, but Dish is, um, seems to be having a massive IT issue. And that's made getting customer service help very difficult, uh, unable to log into your account and more. Now the good news for now is Boost Wireless, Dish TV, and Sing TV, the actual apps and more are working just fine. It's some of the help and some of the customer service options that are not, especially for Sling TV, who seems to be the least effective of this. Now, there's a lot of speculation what happened here, but um, about the time they were doing their earnings last week, their websites went down. And now, um, Bleeping Computer, which is a website that covers all very technical stuff, says they have um, employees at DISH who have confirmed that they've suffered a cyber attack. Now, cyber attack does not necessarily mean they were hacked. It may mean that they detected an attempted hacking, cut off access to their servers in order to protect it. Could mean anything right now. Um, Core Cars News has reached out to DISH by um, email and by phone and has not heard back from our PR contacts at DISH related to what's happening with the Sling TV, Air TV, um, Boost Mobile, and um, DISH TV services websites right now. So if you're trying to get help, trying to pay bills and more, you're gonna to have to wait. Now, some people have had some luck reaching out to Dish and more through social media like Twitter, if that's something you really need. Honestly, right now, I would just kind of keep going. If, you're, if your app is working, I wouldn't worry about it, and I would wait to hear from Dish on what exactly is happening. 
The Air TV at website is completely gone. The Boost mobile website is just got, I think last I checked, this may have changed since I looked last, had an error message. And Dish's website just has a very basic FAQ, a place for you to enter your email, and they'll say they will get back to you at a later time for it. So we'll have to keep a close eye on this. If it was a cyber attack, that could mean anything. So we'll see. And that's only rumored reported from websites who claim to have talked to Dish employees. It's not been confirmed by Dish. So keep that in mind when you see a lot of the rumors and stuff going around. All right, let's keep moving forward here. Um, HBO Max is suing Paramount Plus. Now this one's very interesting. So this is over South Park. Now, a few years ago, um, Paramount sold and then AT&T, but um, HBO Max, the rights to have new episodes of South Park. The catch here was that in 2020, when um, South Park stopped producing regular seasons because of what happened in 2020, they produced a couple specials and that those specials ended up streaming on Paramount Plus, not HBO Max. Now, Warner Brothers Discovery says that's a breach of contract because we have rights to the uh, South Park. Paramount Plus says, hey, you have rights to episodes, not specials. We can stream specials, you get the new episodes. Paramount shot back and said that this Warner Brothers Discovery has not been paying Paramount Plus for the new episodes of uh, South Park that they've been sending, and they continue to send, even though they say um, they're not getting paid for them on HBO Max. This will be very interesting. Uh, we see increasingly content owners trying to pull back content, um, resell them, and do more. And as this happens, more and more, as companies struggle to be profitable, they're fighting over who actually has rights for what shows, what does that as a contract exactly mean. It will be interesting. This could be a major um, fight here. I don't think it's going to go. I think I read $500 million, don't quote me on that, but I think that's what they're asking in damages of Paramount Plus for streaming the specials instead of them streaming over on HBO Max. Keep an eye on this. I got a feeling that this is just the tip of the iceberg of such lawsuits we're going to see in the future. Speaking of Warner Brothers Discovery, they reported their fourth quarter earnings of 2022, and they lost $2.1 billion with a B dollars in that quarter. A lot of that was restructuring, write-offs from shutting down um, things that they bought as part of the merger with uh, Warner Brothers. But that works out to be about, let me get this money, $22.8 million dollars per day, roughly lost every single day for them. So if you see them doing things like, hey, we're getting rid of the RSNs, they're not worth it, we're losing money, we're shutting it down. Slashing production in different areas, canceling shows, even some that were finished production already, and more, it's because they're trying to cut back. Now, some of this is accounting stuff, right? They're writing off debt, they're writing things off to account for that. I don't think they actually lost that money out of their bank account as much as they wrote it off for tax purposes. But it's definitely a big deal here. War Brothers Discovery, though, seems to be very confident, very happy with where they are. Seems to be part of their bigger plan here to cut back on the amount that they're spending on content. So we'll see. Uh, I got a feeling that they're not gonna be alone. Many companies are gonna follow suit with them in the future. But let me know, does it shock you how much money War Brothers Discovery lost in the fourth quarter of last year? $22 million per day? Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, if you use Google TV, now Android TV's been uh, replaced by Google TV, the new user interface on like the new Chromecast with Google TV. There's a new user interface rolling out. They announced it last week. This will be much more focused on content discovery. There'll be several sections in the home screen to make it a little less cluttered, a little easier to find what you want. A family section, a Spanish section, a movies and a show, show sections that will show you content that you've been watching or recommended content for you, making content discovery much more personalized, much more organized, and much more um, clear. So there will be some other under the hood improvements, um, some improvements to search functions, profile switcher, and more is also coming down through the user interface. Have you updated to the new user interface on Google TV? I think the one that I probably got first was the Chromecast with Google TV. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think of it. I'll love to hear from you. All right, next up, 42% of Americans, according to this survey, are paying for a subscription service they are not um, using. Now, this is a big issue. I think we've all at some point fallen victim to this. Either we thought we canceled a free trial, we really didn't, we forgot about something, we stopped watching a service and it just kind of sat there, kept billing us for years. 
Well, Rocket Money has a new app, that, and we'll put a link to this in the show notes down below, but a new app that will allow you to scan your account, see all the subscriptions you're paying for, and with a click through the app, cancel them. Definitely encourage you to check your bank accounts. It's very easy. It's not just TV service, music services, Uber Eats, and more. It seems like everything is a subscription service. I was uh, on the way home from Florida. We stopped at Circle K. They have like a $6 a month subscription for fountain drinks and coffees. You get a coffee a day or a fountain drink a day for six bucks. Honestly, not a bad deal if you do that a lot, um, but it's another subscription service. It's another one you could forget about and forget to cancel. So check that out. I'll put a link to this down below, but Rocket Money has the ability for you to easily scan your account, see everything you're paying for and more. So check that out. All right, last story of the day. We talked about the website issues that Dish are having. We'll have to wait and see what they say there. But they recorded, uh, reported their fourth quarter 2022 numbers last week also, and they lost 268,000 TV customers. That's both in Dish, traditional satellite, and Sling TV. And it's um, not alone. Increasingly, more and more um, streaming services, TV companies, traditional live TV are losing subscribers. And I often have said this, many cord cutters start with a live TV service and then eventually go to the on-demand. If you're not a sports fan or very dedicated to a news channel that you really want to watch, there's not a lot of reason to pay for a um, live TV service when you can watch on-demand content through so many of these apps. Watch it with commercial free or less commercials and watch it when you want to watch it. I suspect that increasingly we're going to see that more become more and more popular in the future. We'll have to wait and see. But let me know, do you subscribe to a live TV service? I got a feeling that our group here may be a little bit heavier in the live TV service. We find that new core cutters often start with it, but increasingly the majority of core cutters no longer pay for any live TV service. And if you're a sports fan like I am, that feels weird. But if you're not a sports fan, the vast majority of Americans honestly are not. And if you are, many of the major sporting events are free over the air with an antenna for example, but I'm seeing that become increasingly popular. It's probably why Dish is moving so hard into becoming a wireless company with 5G and Boost Mobile and more because they're looking to diversify. But leave me a comment. Did you start with a live TV service, go on demand only at some point? I'd love to hear from you. All right, well, that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Check out that top 10 free Roku channels videos, link in the show notes down below. Until tomorrow, take care, be safe. I'll be back again real soon.